On this episode, we talk about the GOAT himself, the godfather of powerlifting, Louis Simmons. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you knew him or not. There's a lot of takeaways you can get from him, but he's truly one-on-one. True. Yeah. I mean, a fucking legend, whether it's like powerlifting, athlete training, CrossFit, whatever it is, just fitness in general, he's a legend. Yep. Absolutely. I think everything from mentality to training for me affected, I think it affected all of us and everyone in fitness. Yeah. So it was a great episode. Yeah, I was excited to share some personal stories. Um Average people give you average results. Crazy motherfuckers give you crazy results. Let's go to the show. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms. Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself, <laughs> Cole Susak. Whew, rough day today. Passing Louis Simmons. <sighs> the man, the myth, yeah. the legend. Somebody else talk for a the second. Icon. <laughs> the icon. The <laughs> icon. Yeah. I mean... You look at Louie, he's literally, like, he's how I got into powerlifting. Like, you and him, like, yeah. he's an icon. He's yeah. a legend. So, I think the fitness industry, like, took a like, big L overall in general. It's uh, 50 years. I think his competitive career went in the past five decades. That's <laughs> silly. Because he was 74 when he passed. I think he started, you know, in his early 20s. So, it's like, mm-hmm. he went elite in five decades, I'm pretty sure. Fucking yeah, it, it, it's it, like it's literally like it almost like hard to grasp his like influence. I just think of like the crossover too. I mean, look, he made this machine behind us here, yeah. like the yeah. re- because he broke his damn back. Not only the crossover there, the crossover in the CrossFit, the crossover in Olympic lifting, the crossover in the sports. It literally touched every part of fitness. Mm-hmm. But what was the most like awesome about it is that it was in, and I wrote this on my IG. It was in the most unapologetic way possible. Yeah. I mean, look at his tattoos. He's got yeah. two axes on his tattoos. Yeah, I mean, tats. it was like, so I think that's what I loved because I was like, this motherfucker does not care. You're literally in or you're out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You either fuck with him or you don't. And he did not fucking care because he literally thought he was living like a fucking samurai. Yeah. Like I that mean, was all of his was shit was based on the ball or the sword. Yeah. Like he on ba- some real shit. He, he dedicated like his entire life to the gym and stuff like that. And you know, because Luke Edwards in his post, he said that basically he forced you to live the lifestyle. Like he, yeah. if, if you weren't all in and didn't believe what he was thinking, he just didn't want you to fucking be around. There's so many eerie p- parallels of what I've t- but, taken. That's what I was about to say. Oh, it's yes. bad. It's well, so there's one of those things where to look up to somebody, like when they're like. He's like a Mount Rushmore guy for me, right? It's like him, Arnold, my grandfather, and Car- Carnegie. Mm-hmm. Carnegie obviously was dead. My grandfather's passed away. Louis Arnold's the only one left. Mm-hmm. But I got to interact with three out of four of them yeah. personally. That's legit. <laughs> that's, that's pretty unique, I think, which is also what puts me in a unique spot, right, to be able to speak about it. I experienced it. And it's like the impact is is almost insurmountable mm-hmm. to everything you know about me it's, yeah. it's it's hard to think about what what are like the the first three things that come to mind when you think louis simmons um, now like now that you've known him for his like well i think it's like it was <clears throat> indirectly indirectly right mm-hmm. so it's like it's the teachings because i was so like in it mm-hmm. and then to be able to experience it in person changed it even another level because then it took like my mentality to a different level so like it's different when you're reading it on the internet which is a one of a kind experience when you step in the gym there yeah you know it's like so it's different once again i think that's why my perspective is going to be so different because you can study it and learn it but when you walk inside of there and you know and i know i really had no business being there that's what I wrote in my post. Like yeah. somehow he kind of he let me keep coming back, <laughs> but I think <laughs> that he respected how much I loved it. Like I je- and that's the thing about Louis is like he was super crazy. But if you wanted to get strong, he would talk to the guy that that was his first mean. He had no fucking clue. Like Larry Pacifico is yep. the same fucking way. We saw it. Like those guys care about strength so much that it was like, all right, skinny Corey, you want to squat at West Side, huh? That's what he said to me. I go, yes, I do. And I was like, I remember we were in the side room one of my first days there squatting. I'm there with my fucking briefs on. And they're still talking about what, you know, variation they want to do or whatever it is, like, for the dynamic method, what speed squats. And he's like, Corey's got his briefs on. He's ready to go. Like, I, I was fucking, you know, <laughs> you know. Or like I told Cole this story today about Jason Daniel text me when he saw it. Yeah. We were up there during uh, Louis' last, like, training cycle. And 
he was pulling, and I, I'm trying to figure out if there's video of what Luke Luke posted. I don't know if it was the same deadlift session or not. He's deadlifting. We're deadlifting through bands. I think I made like four plates. He made something crazy, and he's bleeding all over the fucking bar. He gets out of there and he goes, "Hey, help me get my briefs off." So he, me and Jason are the only ones standing there. We're like, "Okay." Now briefs, for you guys who don't know, they're like super tight compression shorts that all these like multi ply guys wear, which I wear too. And so Louie had these old purple ones. I don't even know who the fuck made them. So me and Jason are on each side. We're fucking pulling these briefs off Louie, and he's bleeding all over Jason's arm. Like, his nose is bleeding, and I look at Jason, and I'm bleeding from the bar. We're just getting bled on and bleeding on shit. Very sanitary. And yeah, oh, yeah, and I'm yeah. thinking to myself, like, what world am I in right now? But I loved it all the same. So I just remember, like, very specifically thinking, we're fucking in the trenches right now. <laughs> yeah. Like you know what I mean? The like extremes of extreme. The extreme of extreme, which is why I've always been, you know, uh, so drawn to the West Side, uh, you know, this whole situation because when I moved to Columbus, I didn't even know it was here. Mm-hmm. When I watched, so the backtrack, when I'm 18 years old, I'm doing my second meet ever. I was training around some guys that did the conjugate, but I didn't even know what that, what that was at the time, but they followed Louie, but they're from Steubenville. I worked at this place called the Fitness Pavilion. But it was inside of a trailer court, literally. You drove down a fucking <laughs> gravel road inside of a trailer court. And Louis re- referenced as the Trailer Park Nationals. Louis benches 600 on his 50th birthday. There's video to prove it. And he jumps out. He's got a denim shirt. He jumps in this guy's arms. I remember it. And, I'm, and I didn't know there was a video until just now. I just saw it yesterday. I'm looking to try to find myself in the crowd, but it's so blurry I couldn't. Yeah. But I was sitting there, and I watched the whole fucking thing. I remember it because I remember... I didn't know that who he was because there was no internet, mm-hmm. but I knew it was somebody important and it was a really big deal and it was fucking hype. And you see Kenny Patterson and all the original dudes like from the picture you posted, they're yeah. all there. But I was unaware of what I was really watching. Mm-hmm. But then I go on, you know, I'm looking to make sure my dates are right. And I see it was a bench meet. I was in a shirt. I fucking almost bombed out and made one. I fucking <laughs> terrible. Imagine that. I have now fucking, that. yeah, it's fucking <laughs> terrible. That's a whole nother story. Number one bench of the day, Louis Seven Six Hundred. Number thirty-eight, Corey Gregory Two Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it. So I sent it to Danny to put on the blog, and I'll put it on social media. But it's and the trophy's still over there on top, uh, on top of the uh, where the bathroom is over here in the gym from nineteen ninety-eight. And so you fast forward, it's about two thousand five. I'm here for four or five years, but I'm heavy in bodybuilding. I'm powerlifting. NASA meets, but I'm not doing conjugate. I'm still a, I'm a bodybuilder competing in NPC, NABF, all these drug-free organizations, but I'm doing, I think I'm doing powerlifting at, at you know, uh, on the off season, but I'm really not. I'm just getting fat and I'm lifting like a bodybuilder. So anyway, I run across Flex Magazine article in 2005 or six, which I have and I'll bring in. And it explains the conjugate split. It explains the max effort dynamic method, the best I had ever seen it. Powerlifting USA I used to read the articles but I didn't really like lock on to what was really happening. And as I started to get down the road of real programming, I was starting to get really interested. So anyway, I see the split and I realize, wait a second, this is the same guy I watched bench bench 600 pounds. At that point, I really Mm -hmm. hadn't made the correlation. That's cool. And then I go, wait a second, he's here. Yeah. So I'm living in Columbus. I'm in business already, right, for general pop personal training. But then I'm like, this situation is right around the corner. How the fuck do I learn this stuff? It's too good to be true almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and all on accident. I had no yeah. clue when I moved here. West Side was here. I had no clue the Arnold Classic was here. I didn't know any of that. Mm-hmm. So it was all by accident. Mm-hmm. So then fast forward 2008, um, when I started MP, uh, there's a sleep product that we had. It was called Bulletproof, Fucking which so good, so good. One of the one of the ingredients is banned now. <laughs> <laughs> shout out, <laughs> well, shout out, Fen- shout out, out Fenubut. <laughs> no hey, free shout outs. That was amazing. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, Louis has had problems sleeping, basically his whole life. He, he's had multiple interviews where he said he won't sleep more than two hours. In. Mm-hmm. But he took like three. You're only supposed to take one scoop of that shit. He took like three scoops of it and he slept for like five hours. I would expect nothing less. Yeah. I feel yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> but if I backtrack a second, when Serrano introduced me to him, he said, "Yeah, come up to gym and you know, let me see what you got." So I go up to gym. I'm intimidated as shit because at this point, I'm I'm watching the videos. Like I'm I know what the fuck's going on at Westside now. So I go in there and he's sitting on his chair, 
and he's like rocking back and forth, and he's like, if this is shit, I'm going to tell you it's shit. <laughs> and I go, well, I said, Lou, that's the only thing I can really ask for. Like, just give it a try, man. And if you think there's value, like I'm trying to build this brand, I would love to, you know, give it to some of the guys or whatever. And I was like, you know, and, I, you know, I've, I compete in powerlifting. <laughs> <laughs> also, and he kind of looked at me like, sure you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So... <laughs> It was one of those things where um, simultaneously, though, at that same time, Tim Harold, who was a super heavyweight at Westside, six foot seven, four ten, not small, yeah, not, not small, small. Not <laughs> lives walking distance from old school gym. That's how. That's where he grew up. That's amazing. He literally yeah. lived in the neighborhood behind yeah. the new gym or the the, yeah, the yeah. newest location at that time. Walks in probably a few months later. And he's a fucking monster. He's like, uh, I might want to do some GPP. And, and I'm like, I, was, I literally, I'm like 175 at this time. I just got done doing a photo shoot. I go, will you teach me West Side? He's like, you want to learn West Side? I go, yeah. He goes, all right, next Monday we'll start. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's well, like yeah. yeah. I was done. like, <laughs> first thing, good mornings. Tim, good morning, 700 fucking pounds. What it, which From is, chains, right? Uh, no, just walked it just, out. He, Which is Jesus. unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Unfucking believable. And I do 185. <laughs> <laughs> and almost get fucking broken. Yeah. Something and, that will literally kill oh, you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, we're trying to spot it. Him? Yeah. Do, yeah. What are you going to spot do? 700 that I had on no a shot. good morning? <laughs> I had no shot at that. So, I mean, the dude is, a, I mean, an 800-pound rod deadlifter. He's a fucking, mm-hmm. he like, had a back like a dinosaur, basically. Like, his <laughs> his vertebrae probably looked like a T-Rex. You know what I mean? You got this, right? You got yeah, this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking, well, we ain't got a fucking chance yeah. of lifting this stuff off of you. I don't even know how to spot right at that yeah. time, you know? Jeez. So, anyway, so then it gets to the point where I start eating. Before I know it, I'm 215, 220. I got a single-ply suit, yeah. but I'm in it. You know, and I'm around a 600-pound squat, and that's when he says... All right, I'm going to start going back on Fridays if you want to go. And I'm thinking, oh, shit, okay. You know? So, so then, fucking so he, level so, up, boy. So he, he gave you the go-ahead. He's saying, the hey, one. Come ride with he's me the on one Fridays. That, he's the one that took me. Okay. So Tim, Tim was the one, and he said, <laughs> Tim was man of few words, very few words. He said, don't make me regret this. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, 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 I can see it. No, it that, that, that's, that's a huge thing to him. To, to say, take me, yeah, because I you. rode with him. He picked me up the whole. You know, he came to the gym because he lived right. I would just yep. wait at the gym with him. He picked me up and took me, and that's where I met Joe Bayless, Josh Guthridge, like that whole crew that ended up a lot around old school a lot and that helped mm-hmm. me for years. Um, and basically, like that was my first. And then I go and I get hazed by Gritter. He's screaming at me because Louis, like, met you know knew me from MP now, and saw me there, but didn't really engage because he's like, all right, let's see if they'll break this guy. Yep. And then he hands me off to this fucking really mean little motherfucker that, like, is fucking mean, bro. Like, he, I think they said he squatted 800 at 81 back in the day, but he's like a carpenter, and he's just fucking just mean looking, but he weighs like nothing. You I know feel like I mean? we've never talked about this, so this is fucking yeah, this I've is told the story before, but I'll, I'll tell like, you. Yeah, so I walk in the fucking door, and I'm intimidated as shit, but at least I'm, I'm co-signed by Tim, which is yep. good, right? So I go in there, and they're like... We're squatting against bands. And I go, all right, well, I think I'm squatting against bands. But I realize two things are happening. One, never been in a monolift. Everyone knows that's been in a monolift, what that yeah. feels like the first time. Two, I was squatting in front of a mirror. So so there we go. That isn't happening at West Side. You don't squat in front of yep. a mirror whenever you go to a meet. And I didn't know how to choke the bands right. Oh jeez! Oh the dagger! Oh and man. it's the big and it's the big blues. So to give you guys an understanding, the big blue bands is like three reds, basically two and a half, three reds. Yep. They're choking around the monolift plus a two by four, so it's like basically like the hundred pound dumbbell in the thing. So it's a lot. So Damn. I get under the bar <laughs> and unrack it, and we're box squatting. So I've never sat on a box without a mirror. I've never had the bands choke this way, and I'm in an environment of a bunch of fucking killers. Yeah. So I unrack the bar and I think, I am absolutely fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what I thought. Because I was probably like roughly 600 pound squatter, like 220 yeah. in, in gear. And I unrack it. What did you unrack? What was, what was just, the bar Just weight? the bar. It was, it was just, just the bar. bar. Okay, so I'll tell it. you how that yeah, goes yeah. in a second. It's just the bar. And I'm like, I am so fucked. Like in my head. And, and Gritter's like, 
let's fucking see what you got. Get under the bar. And I get under there, and he goes, <laughs> and then he's like, he's telling me to hold it after I unrack it. Hold, hold. And I'm thinking, like, this feels so fucking heavy right now. I don't even know if I knew how to push on my belt. I mean, I was yeah, learning yeah. all that shit. You're going stuff. through the ground, yeah. <laughs> so then I realized no one takes quarters at West Side. Plates only. Yes. <laughs> was it du- a plate or a hundo? No, it was a plate. Okay. But it's doubles, you know, and I'm with the group, yep. with Tim's group or whatever. So it's one plate, and I'm like, sit, get up, and he, you know, it looks chaotic because I'm like sitting wrong on the box. I mean, I'm fucking everything up. So after every set, he tells me how how shitty I am. That's the worst. Who the fuck let you in? It's the worst fucking squad I ever saw in my fucking life. Like every time I come out of there, every fucking time. So then, you know, it's one plate. It's two plates, and he's telling me to hold after every unwrap. Hold, hold. And my lower back is literally just like pulsating because I am just getting fucking punched in the mouth every. So in four reps or four sets, I'm at four plates, which is like six something at the top. So I'm thinking to my fucking self, like, you got to fucking make this. And I I think this is where that decision making of like going to the hospital or getting weights kind of started. Because the one guy looks at me and is like, you're at fucking West Side, motherfucker. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, like yeah. Yeah. I unrack it and I sit and he tells me to hold it. And I'm thinking, don't fucking break. Don't fucking break. I sit in the box and I'm like, yeah, and I'm all bent over and I get up and I make it and I rack it. And he goes, that is so fucking terrible. Start over. <laughs> and they fucking deload the weight and he makes me work back up again. So here I am again, one plate and I'm dying Cole I'm like two plates and I couldn't make four plates the next time so then your fucking rib cages is oh bro I got <laughs> hazed and, yep. and by the way Amy is there and she's doing more than me who's the the girl who's one of yep. the best women powerlifters of all time she weighs 70 pounds less than me and she's beating me so I'm just fucking getting just punched in the face at all so anyway I leave there and Tim once again man a few words doesn't really say much he just kind of knows what it is. And the next week, he asked me, like, are you going back on Friday? I'm like, of fucking course I'm going back on Friday. Like, I want to learn this shit, you know? So I walk back in, and Gritter looks at me, and he smiles and goes, I figured I'd scare you off. I go, no, dude, I want to learn this stuff. And then from that day on, everybody was fucking cool. It's a vetting process. It was a vetting process. Big time. And I didn't even realize, but initiation. I was. Initiation. Yeah, he yep. initiated the fuck out of me. And I don't know if that was a thing they did, but I think, like, I did not look like the rest of those dudes at all. And, like, I think they were just testing me. I fucking love sure. that. It, That's it so test. awesome. It, it, yeah. it, and I passed yeah. the test. Fuck yeah. And then if you watch, and we're going to do a, a couple pieces on this on the site. If you watch my 700-pound squat that I did, Louis side-spot me wearing a muscle farm shirt. And Gritter is the first dude smiling right here. So I make the squat. I fucking smoke it. And, and Louis, you know, he just looks at it and walks back over there and Gritter <laughs> smiling ear to ear because he knows. Yeah, yeah. He fucking ran me through the fucking ringer and w- when I was at lunch with Louie that I think it was a week or two before that when I, I was my plan was to squat 700 he goes you know uh, 700 like you can't accidentally squat 700. He's like it's not like his guys yeah. but it's respectable for who I am basically mm-hmm. and you know like because I'm basically a fitness model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those things where when I started to lock on that mentality and I started to understand the training, there was really no going back. And that right there, there was um, a lot of, I have a million stories from just even the short amount of time I was around there. But I, the one thing I grabbed too was when I walked in West Side, I knew I had to bring my best foot forward. And I wanted that for our gym so bad that I wanted if people came here that they were coming to fucking go at it. Mm -hmm. And that like mentality, I think changed me around, like all the way around. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's cool to like that. You set that expectation from, I mean, cause you can obviously, it's very, you can feel it. It's yeah. Yeah. You can feel the moment you walk in. And I could feel it too. When I walked in there, like music or no music, you can feel it when you walk in the door. It's uh. It's really awesome to think that you, like, at 18, like, your fir- one of your first experiences yeah. in powerlifting is seeing the OG West Side, like, balls to the wall. The one they did the documentary on, basically, yes. originally, yes. Like, that's fucking epic. I had no clue what I was watching. The top. I'm telling you, when they walked in, they were carrying their own bars, they had all these denim shirts, and they were fucking monsters. They're running shit. They were running shit. And I was like, what? It, it looked like a fucking biker gang. 
And I was like, I mean, fucking amazing. And I'm in a fucking trailer court. I, yeah. I live in a trailer at this point. Like, none of this feels like that outrageous. You know what I mean? And I'm yeah. like, are you fucking like? So it's one of those things where, yeah, when I matched all that up, and then when I started really understanding and going, and I wanted, and so <clears throat> there's a lot of things that are out here about how you really learn. But I talked about this in my in my book. I immersed myself in it. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything else but West Side for a while. That's how I ended up winning 240, and Amy's still calling me the lean guy, which is fucking hilarious. I'm like, do you see the cottage cheese I got on my stomach right now? <laughs> like, But I immersed myself in it to learn it at the highest level. So then I could say, okay, these are the things I like for my training. I do things a little differently now. But the base level of mentality, expectation, and in lifting principles, a lot of them are Russian and West Side based. And if Louie doesn't come up with these things and take some of the stuff from West Side Barbell, which was Culver City, the original West Side Barbell, it's like we don't have all the like we're not the 4 a.m. crew. Old school gym doesn't look like this. Like <clears throat> we wanted a hardcore gym, but there were so many of my like ideals that have came from that. It's like yeah, it's all o- it's all over the place. And I always looked up to Arnold growing up, but I never thought I could really be Arnold. Yeah. But when I understood what Louis was building, I was like, I can build my version of this, I believe anyway, right? It's going to take a whole body of work, but it just seemed uh, very attainable for how much I care about this stuff. And that was the only other person that I had ran into that, dude, I, I saw Doris on a flight to Vegas one time, you know, just random. I was going to Vegas for something for MP. And I go, what's going on, Doris? Where, where, you know, Louis's wife. I go, where's Lou at? She goes, he doesn't go on vacation. I go, well, what do you mean? She goes, he's never been on vacation once. I said, why? He goes, he's not leaving the gym. <laughs> Fucking samurai. Yeah. Like, for real. He was like, vacations don't exist. I got to train. Literally, I mean, literally, like, there was no, like. Unapologetic. No. Un- fuck- like, and she just said, like, like I've been dealing with this for, yeah. you know, 20 years. It was just, it was unbelievable. Because that's it, fully what he wanted to do. It's fully what he wanted to do. He's so, the 1%. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, one percent at a, at an unbelievably yeah. probably unhealthy one percent, one percent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like Goggins type shit, but in his own way, really. Big time, yeah. That's for what sure. It is. Yeah, I mean, my like from my perspective, come joining the 4AM crew, that was early, you know, early 2017, and basically that was whenever we were testing out all the band shit. Like literally, as soon as we got in testing the band shit, we were running a bunch of conjugate bench stuff. Mm-hmm. So my first experience getting into powerlifting, obviously you were like kind of showing me the way, yeah. but then you're like, you need to like read the book of methods. Yep. You need to like, this is why. You understand we're why. Yep. And then I remember, you know, how we talked about the environment, like first side walking in. So I never got to if, like fully experience like have Lou, having Louie around or anything like that, but walking in on Sundays. Whenever but you, you went to West Side, yeah. Yeah, whenever you took me for the bench day, literally as soon as you walk into the door, you're like, you, like I felt like, holy fuck. Like, you feel like you could cut you, it. Because, like, tension, like. because you walk around and, and, and you know, it's the, it's the culture and the environment of people there because as soon as you walk in, everyone you look at you look at is about their fucking business like <laughs> yeah. they're not fucking around no and they and they look at you basically like who the fuck are you like it's why like, so why did like, you walk like in why here? the fuck are you here and basically you can tell them not even by saying anything like looking at them in the eyes like you like you can tell that they're testing you like they're trying to I see if you're fucking going to be a bitch or not i kind of think it feels like that probably when because we don't even have guests anymore which is i got from louis but yeah. i think it probably feels like that to them too when there is actually a guest for sure <laughs> i yeah. felt like that when we went to bros honestly john little, bros gym yeah yeah no it, it's similar it was like that that's why i like john bros. and it was a little more extreme too because there's like it's dead fucking quiet too yeah they don't have so you music. don't even really understand or like yeah. know what to feel like yeah. <laughs> I, but I, I mean whenever we went in there like I, I took it as, like, I have to fucking, like, basically prove myself. I have to basically do whatever the fuck they want me to do. Yes. Basically. And I remember no one, like, really said a word to me. <laughs> you know, I was literally just, like, come to you. If if someone talked to me, I would answer, <laughs> but I wasn't going to spoke unless I was spoken to. It was that type of shit. Yeah, yeah, And I remember, you know, there was, like, it was the OG, like, bench guys. Yeah, So, yeah, like, yeah. Ramos was there. And George, George Albert, yeah. George was probably the most intimidating guy there. He's so fucking yoked, For too. sure. Like, I'm looking around, and, I, like... From my perspective, there's fucking guys benching like 900 pounds <laughs> yeah. on the norm, just like doing it for reps. And, yeah. You know, there's like four, like two guys spotting him. Like, yeah, how the yeah. fuck do you even lift that off? Whatever. Yeah. And then George, George is a sin back there, just not saying a fucking word. And he, and I remember, it wasn't the first time; it was the second time he came up and spoke to me, and he just goes, he's like, he's like, 
you need to squeeze the bar harder. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. That's all he fucking said to me. I was like, You're yeah, like, fucking this Roger. Is fucking yeah. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, from my perspective, I, I enjoy crazy shit. I think I have a natural attraction, kind of like you do for crazy shit. Yeah. But watching them just took it to another level. And then to get to experience it, like, I'm very, like, thankful mm-hmm. I got to go inside, like, the walls. Well, and I also think, Cole, because then you felt it. But if you've never walked in there, you've never felt it. But yeah. then you know what it's supposed to feel like here. Big time. And, that, and that's why I'm driving towards that. Because I know if that's how people feel. Like, if, and, and, you know, Matt Brown's been training here for this UFC fight. He was at Westside for a long time. Like, Guys aren't fucking with this place unless they have that feel. There's an edge to it, and that's why people didn't really understand when I got rid of all the members and went to the, like, I've been wanting this environment because I know what it can breed. And if if people are really on board, it, it can get wild. Dude. Well, yeah. you, you know what it's like? It's <laughs> it's comparing, like, when you go from an amateur to a professional. Like, when I think of, like, yeah. Olympic weightlifting, and I go into, like, just like your normal Olympic weightlifting setting or CrossFit gym, people doing lifts and stuff, and you, like... But then when you see like a world class lifter and you're like, oh, now I get what what moving fast yeah. is. Now I understand. What yeah, George. But until you level. see that, yeah. until you see that, you don't understand. They were at an entirely exactly. other level. It was almost like a level that I had a hard time thinking. Like, how are they lifting up that? Like, I mean, stuff that I see our guys yeah. do now. I'm I was seeing then, and I was like, how the fuck are you doing? How the fuck is that happening? Yeah. yeah, some of the shit I was seeing just on a Sunday was unfucking believable. It's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. Trey, talk about your experience. You did. You used a lot of the West Side methods during track. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I mean, just like the conjugate method in general. Like that yep. was like honestly like a huge, if not like I would grant like almost like my whole like senior track season to like literally the conjugate method. Hell yeah! And just like reading all those like West Side books where Louis talked about like, you know, the he's talked about like all the different athletes he's trained. I mean, he's trained like Olympic track yeah. athletes before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's talked about them and all that, and it was just uh, like the impact on that, like just for like athletic performance for me was like massive because yeah. i never like to be honest i never like would have ran those times i would have you'd have never done run. a million hamstring curls yeah because my hamstrings, the bands. <laughs> hamstrings never would have been as healthy or just yeah. like all that kind of shit yeah and the other thing is about the conjugate method i think it is personality driven a little bit too Big because time. i like which is also why i wasn't really originally drawn to olympic lifting because I know like the, everything was based on percentages a right of, yeah. and it still is a lot of it but it's it, they've got away from it a little bit but the reality is that I've uh, I've had it to where it was like we need a break soon. soon. Okay, so I, <clears throat> it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I have this variation, and I can literally just uh, go as hard as I can today, and then I try to beat it by five pounds the next time. I'm like, so oh, that sounds fun. simple. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And the then best. I can be as creative as <laughs> possible is. with the variations. Uh, sign me the fuck up. Oh, and by the way, the Russians uh, used it forever, and the Chinese use it to whoop our ass every year in Olympic lifting. Like. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's fucking do this. And so, like, it made so much sense to my personality because I'm an all-go type of person mm-hmm. that I either got it or I don't got it. I don't, I don't have to worry about 83% of anything today. That you was, know? I was, yeah. that's why I was so pumped when Travis sent you the fucking squat every yeah. day program to, like, integrate it with, like, Olympic yeah. lifting. And guess what happened? It, like, that was the most progress I've ever fucking got, yeah. like, throughout. Yeah, the conjugate method to me just makes so much sense. So, but but it's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's some people love percentages. Yeah, some people love percentages. I'm just not one of those people. Yeah, I love fucking crazy. Yes, <laughs> same. Would have never guessed that. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other, um, you know, if I talk about all of the influential people, though, so not only was Tim Harold at our gym, but also was Zach Cole. Zach Cole. Oh yeah. So actually, let's just take a break right now because yeah, yeah. I want to go into the, the some of the guys around West Side and some of the more Louis stories. We'll be right back. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle. With us is the Athletic Director and Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway. Mr. Treadway. Hey guys, I'm here to talk about our Amino Recovery Lemonade Flavor, now NSF certified. What that means is they stamped their seal of approval right here. Um, it means that everything that you see in this label is actually what's in here. They test it against every product that we say is in here, the exact um, ingredients, the measurements, make sure that it's all correct. Um, we pass with flying colors, and then they test it against 400 banned substances and make sure that nothing that we have in here will make you pop on a drug test or anything like that. So sports coaches, high school, uh, professional, college, whoever you are, you are now able to give this to your athletes per NSF standards. We meet everything. It's the same great product you've always taken. Just now we have that seal of approval for you. How can they find you? 
uh, at Treadway21, or you can email me at Treadway at MaxEffortMuscle.com. All right, cool. Now we got to talk about the West Side Story, Treadway. So you went to Sunday. And we're back. Yeah, and we're back. Sorry, <laughs> and we're back. It, it, that's just a run on from the ad. Okay. Yeah. Treadway's yeah. already here. All right, and we're back. Uh, Treadway. So you are one of the best benchers in the 4 a.m. crew, I Thank would you. say. You and Jake Emery, right? And Cole Susack. Shout and out. so. Dogs. I lo- yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's you guys are the top three, yeah. probably. Yeah. And so now it's like, but you had a couple funny West Side experiences on a Sunday. I think you should tell the, the listeners about your experience at West Side. First off, the passing of Louie, obviously this is what the show is. And then when you walked in, how you felt, and then how you performed a couple <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll preface it with saying that I am a Westside Barbell certified strength coach. Hey! Oh, like, that's, same. There that's you go. who my, my certification was through when I was, like, going through the whole, like, oh, I want to be a strength coach, who am I going to get certified? And I didn't, like – like the traditional route because it's all Mm. garbage whatever corporate box jam and i was like i'm gonna get west side certified because that's real um and so the first time i go in there you know i have that on my um, on my mind like yeah i'm certified by this place but i never really (laughs) like i trained there one time where when Corey took us um but we deadlifted so it was kind of different and it was a big crew and it didn't really like it was mostly our guys yeah it was mostly our guys so like nobody was like like stressing anything so then i come and it's just Corey and i and it's all these like big west side benchers who are like gods of like world record holders yeah (laughs) yeah and the the first story i have is we had all this band crazy band weight and i can't remember it was yeah shitload it it was crazy and i missed the bar (laughs) hold on hold on so this is the so this is the time i was there the first time you guys went i wasn't there i think i went the next the next time you guys went yeah yeah so yeah so that for this story i remember because it was it was me you g and then who there was one other big guy was it aaron was that his name? Oh, yeah. yeah Anyways, yeah, it was yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember we I was benching in a single-ply shirt. You were multi-ply, Treadway's yeah. raw. Yeah, yeah, And then we're benching with this dude who is fucking massive. Super way, strong. Way bigger than us, probably like 6'3", 275. Yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, he's, he's, drinks like, different supplements than we do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a million percent. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember we were benching. We started out with the bar. Then we worked up, just went straight to a purple band. Yeah. And then we added a yellow, yellow band. on top of that. I don't even know how much tension is a fucking yellow It was band. a fucking shit ton. I, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think just the bar was like 300 It had pounds. to be. Like it's when it was cracked, it was 300 <laughs> Yeah, pounds. yeah. And I remember... We're going I, to a board, right? We were going to a one board, yeah, I think, yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And uh, I ended up hitting, like I'm, I'm going to say 135, like... Uh, or a plate on each side with like a five on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 155 plus 300 pounds in band. <laughs> it was whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember we kept working to that, and I remember we worked up to, I think we took a 10 on the purple, then we added a yellow, and then that's whenever I unracked Treadway and he missed it. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what happened? What happened? I just tucked my tail between my legs. <laughs> went and stood. Do you unrack it and say, oh, shit, pretty yeah, much? Yeah, yeah, yeah like, it stapled me. That's when yeah. I, like, tuck my tail between, and I, like, go hide behind Daddy Corey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> th- this, this is also the, this is the same session where I said how, like, that's whenever – um. Oh, uh, what's his name? I can't, I just I just lost it. Whenever he finally Eric. spoke to me. Oh, uh, uh, George. Uh, George. Whenever yeah, yeah. George finally spoke to me, this is the same session. So George and Ramos and everyone like so. There's some OG guys watching. And Troy, yeah. Troy missed the bar. I'll never forget it. <laughs> that's not the most like. That's not even yeah, the worst which, one. That, that's, that's a good one. Though. All right, but that's the, good. Next, on to the next one. That was not the most embarrassing. The most embarrassing was one time nobody showed up with me, and I wasn't there either. Right? Corey yeah. wasn't there. So yeah. I was by myself, <laughs> and I can't remember. Like Corey, like called me and was like, "Hey, I'm not gonna be able to make it, but you can still go." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And so, like, typically I can hide there. Like, there's enough big benchers that I can kind of like get in the mix yeah. with somebody and like yeah. get with some like lighter guys who are more my speed, and I can train with them, whatever. Well, I walk in and the dude goes, "What are you opening at?" And I was like, "What? What do you mean?" And he's like. We're doing a bench meet today. <laughs> <laughs> well, because once a year, George will put on and not tell anybody. He'll just have a fucking mock meet. And Treadway happened to be the <laughs> by himself. <laughs> so, so not only do I have the lightest opener, yeah. but I have to go and they're like, okay, well, what do you want to open at? And I wasn't like super strong at the time. I think I like opened at 225. Yeah, yeah. And uh, – or I wanted to open at 225, and they told me that the minimum that you could open at was 315. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah. and so I'm like, okay, whatever. So I'm warming up, and I take, you know, back then it was, it was you know, different jumps, whatever, and I get to like 275, and it was kind of a struggle. 
but I could get it. And so I, they told you the minimum is three fifty. <laughs> the minimum you could open out was three fifteen, or you had to leave. <laughs> 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 okay. That's all right. And so I go up to the bar, and you know they're like, "All right, are you ready?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then uh, you knew you had no shot I at had, making it. <laughs> no shot. And, and like, I, what's gonna happen? <laughs> That's and all. I, I didn't. I didn't come close. It, st- it stapled me. Like I, I didn't even like make it so that I was like looking to like push up. I just it hit my chest and it was going nowhere. So what'd you do? So af- you what did you get do off after? your chest, right? You didn't I didn't get it. off okay, my chest. Yeah, yeah. So what you wh- what was your route? <laughs> what was the next steps? At, so you so you missed this. You're probably thinking I'm a fucking you know pussy. What 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 what'd, what'd you yeah, <laughs> what'd you then do? Uh, George was like, if you ever want to bench with us again, you got to get stronger. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so I all right, cool. Go, all right, cool. Go fuck uh, myself. Yeah, cool. <laughs> He's like, all right, yeah, I gotta go. go. Die. Um, that wasn't the most embarrassing. The most embarrassing was probably when I was a little bit stronger and I just dropped 225 on myself. Because that <laughs> you got was like, three stories. Yeah. Damn. Does that surprise you? No, it's fucking <laughs> amazing. Yeah, so the the last time I was like, I don't even know why I was nervous because it was just Corey, myself, Aaron. I think you might have been there. Somebody I, was there. And I, my hands were like super sweaty for whatever reason. And uh, I had 225 and I took it down. And on the way up, uh, the bar slipped out of my hands. I think you I just look like I, a I fucking. You basically, you're one. just like, well, I look like an amateur. Like I look like I don't have any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> um, and then Jake Emery was like, "Oh, that happened to me before." And I was like, "Okay, I feel better." He goes with 450. <laughs> 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 Disclaimer. And I was it's like, amazing. Right, cool. dude, that yeah. was amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that with Absolutely. us, Treadway. We'll kick amazing. you off and put Trey back on. Absolutely. Thank you, NSF. Man. Holler at your boy Treadway. He is a way better bencher now. Dude, I mean, like. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like I think anyone who ever walked in the West Side has a West Side story. Oh. They one million percent something sure. crazy happened while while they were there. Which yeah, is kind of awesome. Well, because that's the environment that you're stepping into, so you're either going to be pushed and break or you're going to like break some regular record or break some of your own records. Like I remember um when we started cuz Mike Wolf was there on Sundays too and yep. we became real good friends with Mike and just like when we're taking weights, you have George you got fucking Tony, you had fucking Mike Wolf, and there's a and it's like you got like three world record holders, you know, or guys that have like yeah. OOGs that are just like helping you like in such. If you were there, if, if you wiggled your way in and you were trying to get better, you know, even though Treadway felt like that, but they guys, were, they were there help, yeah, for sure. And and Drex, right? Drex was, he was amazing. A huge help. Drex drove. To, Dr- Drex Wolf. And, uh, dude, what George and Tony came and judged meets for us. Like, yeah. every one of those guys outside of Westside had went out of their way to help us or me multiple times. Like, yeah, dudes was nuts, but they were like, when you were about the life, mm-hmm. which they eventually figured mm-hmm. out about me, the support had been unreal yeah. for years. And, like, they were, like, the best of the best. Anything yeah. they said... I immediately took notes. Yeah. One million percent. So I'm saying, like, the amount of information that I received there in a couple of years of lifting off and on was astronomical. Like, I don't know if people can really conceptualize what I was experiencing. I don't know if I knew what I was experiencing at that time. And now it can never be experienced that same way again. Mm-hmm. You Which know what I mean? Wild. Which is wild. And so it's like... Um, yeah, it's just, like, unbelievably valuable to my entire life. Like, that's why I think it feels so deep because I didn't – look, people don't really call Louie on the phone. If you don't really run into him in his, like, real segmented world, you ain't going to see him. I haven't really seen him in a while. But I tried to get him out here. It was only uh, maybe six months ago. I heard he bought a Corvette, like, close by, and I tried to get him out here. But he was, like, told Tommy, like, no detours today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just what it is. Um, but the reality is, if I think back of how many times you could easily said, you know, go fuck yourself, Corey. You're too little for mm-hmm. this place. You know, I mean, it could have been every time. Uh, one of the most impactful, though, by far on my entire lifting career was when I bombed out. And I had been training at Westside quite a bit. And there's a big meet in Tennessee, the same yep. cell block meet we went to that traded an amazing job capturing. And I was going to squat 781. I've been in this ballpark for a while, but I would dip back, do these covers back and forth. I'm going to squat 781 now for sure. But then I had an opportunity to do it. Well, my weight my weight cut was really shitty. I mean, it was like I didn't cut, make weight till 3 in the morning. Tony, I was staying with Tony because Tony lifted on the pro day. 
I weighed in. None of my water came back on me. In like to Treadway's point, I look like I didn't even know what I was doing. So I get under. I open at 650. My dumbass should have opened lighter. But in the back room, I think I made like 585 or 600. And it was all right. But then I put my straps up. And for some reason, and I got Louie sides, like not side spot, maybe calling depth, you know, back, 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 things you hear, whatever. And I'm like, I'm kind, I'm there with the team kind of, but I, I'm in it enough, right, that it was like time to show up. And fucking, I bombed every one of them. And I didn't even look like I knew how to lift. I think that's what upset it's me more than that. It was yeah. so frustrating. But if I don't go through that embarrassment, and that's what I wrote in my, my IG post, I was embarrassed mm -hmm. because I was there. I was there for two days. I was six hours away, away from my family. I, I had a good training cycle, and I go, and I just pissed down my leg. And that's not really my style. And so, like, I come home, like, really t tail between the legs. Like, fuck. But then I type in something that changed my life forever. What happens if I fucking squat every day? Because I told myself I'm never going to feel like that again. I want the hardest lift of the fucking meat to be my best lift. I want to know that I'm confident that I can unrack it, I can fucking squat it. Mm -hmm. And I just took this mentality like I need the craziest fucking shit I can ever find. And that's when I ran in the John Bros article. Mm -hmm. But instantly I thought to myself, but what happens if I do a conjugate version of this, right? And then that's when that whole thing, which I believe, look, the content I did with Arnold, the Get Swole, all that shit killed it. But what made me different than everyone else was that. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, no one had even seen that shit. And it wasn't because I was a great lifter, but I was willing to do this crazy shit. And I knew every fuck. it separated me from every other fitness dude that was out there. And it did fucking 50 million page views and blah, 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 blah. But I was able to bring new people into Westside. I was able to expose Louis Simmons' techniques to an entirely different audience that was probably high-end gen pop. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people really realize that about my content. But all the way from the Get Swole to parts of Arnold's stuff, but really with the squad every day, I was able to really shine some light on what I had learned um, and then do it in my own way. For sure. And so that right there is like something I take a lot of pride in because there was a lot of West Side Muscle Farm t-shirts out there. Yeah, there like was. A gang of them, mm -hmm. which I, got, I think I still have one left. Yeah. But it was like one of those things where – that was something that I've never been the same since then. My career's not the same. My mentality's not the same. John Bros had a lot of help with that too, but it was still based around the Russian that's concept. Still like the core, yeah. It's still the core. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, if I don't get that embarrassed, that's the negative to a positive. I don't then go to the other side of the equation, which is why a lot of people still fuck with me because I'm that dude that brought that out, and they see the way I grind through weights, and they see the mentality. And it all is a, is, a, is a part of all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just wild how your life, yeah, you know, and I just went where it went, you know what I mean? Because of my passion for all this, I'm like, I can't fucking stand that I, I, I felt that way. And that my idol is calling me and I can't fucking make that weight. Like, that shit bugged me, man. I fucking couldn't stand it. And that's why I was like, I got to find a better way. West Side's way maybe wasn't ultimately my way. But the version of it was, which is what we kind of uncovered through that process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that makes me think of Louis' fucking famous quote: Aver "Or average people give you average revol average results, unaverage people yeah. or unaverage things give you unaverage results." Well, and what? Yeah. No, you're fine. What he? I remember um, him talking about one of the guys, which will remain nameless, but he would have to bail him out of jail a lot. Yeah, and I would ask him like. You know, aren't you? Because I don't think I read that. I think he said it to yeah, me. Yeah, he said it. And I was like, yeah, you know, that guy's all you're getting him out of jail. He's like, yeah, but if it's like an average dude, he's going to give me like average weights. This dude's fucking crazy. He's going to be crazy weights. Fuck <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that's just it. That's just yeah, it. Yeah. Like, you think Tony Ramos is like on yeah. the average scale? Uh, we all no. know him. Fuck no. Yeah. The reason why Tony Ramos was able able to do what he was able to do is because he's half nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, all respect to Tony. You, have to, he's, you <laughs> yeah. have to be. I'm not fucking wired right. You guys see, like, that's what some people think some of that shit's a show. That's me being as authentic as if I want to fucking growl and yeah. fucking, like, that's literally what <laughs> I need. Or punch a hole, yeah, punch a hole yeah. in a fucking wall. Like, I need that to attack that type of weight. And if you've never unracked weight, weight like that, you can't talk because mm -hmm. you don't know what it really takes. Yeah. I learned that shit from those, that intensity I saw and witnessed. And when I would be around guys like Ramos, and I'm like, yeah, this motherfucker just ain't wired right, bro. Like, I'm like their, I'm like their like normal friend. 
yeah. and I'm not even fucking normal. So it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? But that uh, back to kind of that. So Ramos, Mike Wolf, George Halbert, Jay Fry, which you guys met the other day, um, t- Joe Bayless, Josh Guthridge, Tim Harold, A.J. Roberts, Greg Panora, um, Luke Edwards. I mean, every one of those dudes, hopefully I didn't forget nobody, they all helped. Every one of them. And Ramos um, and Joe Bayless – and uh, Jay Fry, which has been helping, you know, most recently. George was at on Sundays for 26 years. He just quit going because now I think he's they're done with the Sunday group. I think I think they all knew what was coming too. I think it was like one of those things, right? But it's like these guys because I I ran into those guys in like 2008. So you got to figure what's 2022. How long 14. is that? 14 years that I've been, you know, West Side uh, conjugate version. Yeah, I mean. It's, it literally feels so like what, most of my career. So people that are aware of of Louis, people that are not maybe yeah. aware of Louis, what, what do they t- what do they take away? Like how what's something they they can apply maybe well, to their life from Louis? It's the curiosity. Yeah. See, that's the thing that a lot of people. So people maybe don't realize that programming is extremely important to me personally and my business and everything I do is based around programming. Mm-hmm. Most people that know me is from my workouts. Then they might yeah. you know get down the rabbit hole and see these other things. So I was so enamored that he was grabbing the Russian stuff and then making it his own and grabbing other people's stuff and making it his own. And the way that he did it, and I, so I was like, how do I immerse myself, learn it? And, but I saw it continue to evolve. And it still was evolving all the way up till he passed away. Mm-hmm. They were doing stuff that I never thought I would see them do. Um, you know, five by five shit and still box wine. And like they, they always were evolving because he was always trying to add and subtract to the system to make it great. Mm-hmm. And that's the one thing I took. Like when we deadlifted every day, it didn't fucking work. So I didn't do it anymore. But fucking squatting every day sure as fuck worked. That's you what know? makes him great. Though. That's what makes him yeah, great. Yeah. He's not scared to like miss a weight, dump a weight, fail something because he knows he's going to learn from it. So his curiosity of training and taking old methodology and wrapping it up for this sport and just even like the bands, Dick Hartzell, which a lot of people don't know because he's so old, he's from Youngstown. He came up with the Jump Stretch Band, which is the bands that the original bands that they used. He was a stretching connoisseur. Like he traveled all over the world, taught all these pro athletes how to stretch. Like he was like really fucking smart. You can look him up. Well, him and Louie, they're roughly the same age, or maybe Dick was a little bit older. Louis like went to goes to one of his seminars and goes, "We got to find a way to put these on the fucking barbell," because he understood that uh, accommodating resistance because he read about it. And so he was like, they literally just started fucking strapping them up on the fucking bars and figuring it out. And then, you know, I think he got broken through the process. Some of the guys got broken through the process. But at the end of the day, he had a controlled test group of fucking monsters, which is the same shit we got going on, right? And that's how he was able to come up with all this stuff that literally changed powerlifting and training and athletic training forever. Um, the GPP stuff. All oh, the Bulgarians are really good deadlifters. Oh, but you know what? Most of them were loggers. They had to drag logs backwards out of the fucking woods. Sled drags. It's no coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you read that stuff and the way he applied it, it made me think completely different. And so what you need to realize is that it's not one way, but there maybe there's a way that you lock onto mm-hmm. and then tweak it over time. But the curiosity of training and not being scared. Um, to try things and fail at it. I don't care if if something doesn't work. I'll just change it to the next month. Like, I'm not tripping on that. And also, he was pretty fearless, just in like his. You're on the ship or you're not on the ship. And I, I've really, I, I think I'm a little bit nicer, maybe, and a little less crazy. But I'll tell you, I've taken it, that page right out of his book. If you're not fucking with me, then you're just not around. And that can be arrogant. That can be whatever you think. But it's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Last time I checked, my fucking name's on the lease for this place. Well, actually, at least I own the motherfucker. So it's like, it's just my way. Now, if you have my respect, I'm going to listen to you. Undoubtedly. And take it in. And probably use portion of it. But the reality is, most of the people that had problems with Lou had all kinds of different problems. But it was mostly because it was like that. Doesn't even mean he was right all the time. Doesn't mean I'm right all the time. It just means you're building your, what he called, heaven or hell. It's a little bit of both. And to him, it was like heaven because he had the environment, but hell once he couldn't take part in it all the time. And because of the other, I think, issues that happened in there. So it's like, 
you know, I, I just I take all of that stuff and kind of fucking you know look at it and be like, yeah. what things can I apply? What things can I take out? You know, what I mean, and one of my big things was I never ever heard anybody talking about wealth building stuff there, but I wanted that to be different here. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure that the guys had something outside of lifting, and that was always like kind of a a little bit of a problem I think with business and stuff like that. And so those are some of the things I wanted to change about our environment here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But now that I've made it more serious, people ain't on the ship; they're off the ship. And at the end of the day, like. I can care about them, but if you're coming at me, then you just took that ability for me to keep caring out if it's disrespectful. Mm -hmm. If it's respectful, we can talk about it like men. If it's disrespectful, we ain't got well, nothing to talk think about. Think about how much fucking time that saves you, though, because you don't have to worry about, like, you just, like, you're cutting the fat pretty Jake much. Jake Emery told me this, and it's every, not everybody can walk in that fucking door, but everybody can walk out of it. Fuck and that's the yeah. same shit at Westside. Shout out. Not everybody can walk in Westside. But motherfucker, anybody can walk back out in the parking lot. That's how I feel about this place. And I got it from that mentality. Because if I'm going to spend my time, whether you value it or not, I value it. So if I'm going to spend my time to help you make you better and really care about it, like probably more than anybody you've ever met before, care about something, potentially. At least that's the way I view myself. It's it fucking real deep. Then, you know, if you come at me in a certain way, that it's an easy cut for me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's the same thing. Like when each of us walked in old school, right? When I walked in old school the first time, I didn't, I didn't see you the first two times, and then I didn't even say anything. You came over and introduced yourself, but I never even like started like training with you or like the couple guys mm -hmm. until like a couple months down the line. But I would just like chirp you, I'd ask you about like former technique on something like little yeah. by little. But then like I felt like I was uh, maybe I just made it up in my head, but maybe may like earning your respect, yeah, just because I was being there, yeah, just by being there. That's part so, of it for so, sure. Yeah. I mean, did you feel like that kind of pressure when you first walked in? Oh, for sure. I was, yeah. I've never even been close to that environment before. Hell yeah. Yeah. It ain't nothing like we got now, neither, so no. that's crazy. And it's the same thing. I had no idea you were even fucking here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in Columbus. No idea. Yeah, it's funny. I When I Googled old school, it was hilarious. I'm like, what? It's 25 <laughs> minutes away. <laughs> yeah. Did you feel that same way, Cole? Whenever I first came? Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! But I mean, I was I was already bought in. Yeah. I was I was already bought in before I even came. Like whenever I knew that I even had the opportunity to go, like it was that close. It was only a twenty minute drive. I was it was an easy game time decision. I was like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> and I j I just remember the first time, the first two times I came. I think uh, maybe you were getting back from vacation, so Monday, you, like you might not have been there. But Tuesday, whenever I or maybe I didn't yeah. show up or whatever. First time I came though, and you asked me. I, I was just working out, and then you asked me, you, like, I, I didn't come up to you and say, hey, Corey, blah, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I want to join the 4 a.m. crew, whatever. Yeah, I just yeah. showed up, <laughs> yeah. was working out, and then I think whenever you asked, like, where I was from, I said, like, the Valley, like, I'm just going to keep showing if that's cool, and then yeah. you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, it's game, and then. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Well, because then it's like, just great. show me if you can follow, if you can follow through. Yeah, and yeah. then it was the gym. I literally didn't miss. I just kept going. Going, doing everything everyone else was doing, mm -hmm. fucking getting bumpy and shit, grounding, getting just, bumpy. you know. It is. And then uh, that's how the opportunity came to work at Max and everything like that. So yeah, just down the line. It is yeah. weird though, because like thinking about it now, because like I only followed you on Twitter, but like I never really been a Twitter person, so yeah. I don't even know why I was drawn to even come in the first place. Because <laughs> but but once I was there, then I was hooked, I, hooked or whatever. So, well, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. That is the hook. <laughs> yeah. Trey, did you feel like that the first time you came down? No, because I came had, up to you guys first, you right? Came, yeah, and we, I mean, we had like our, like, we had like our own group that was yeah, like yeah. literally, I mean, like, like the pit was literally 4 a.m. crew, except yeah, yeah. it's high schoolers, just not mature adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This you're is right. literally the only difference. Bunch of babies. Like, we yeah. already had like our, like, we had like, we had this and we had this environment. You guys were in it. Yeah, we were already in it. So, Which like, was super sick. Why not join it with mature people? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the way that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I came up and saw you guys, and yeah, then you, came you guys came us, down. Yeah. yeah, which was awesome because I was respecting what you guys were doing, mm -hmm. which is cool. Yeah, yeah the uh, I think the takeaways right are like the um, the amount of stuff you could learn from a guy that is that passionate about something is unbelievable. Yeah, and so and it's not just um, you know like I remember asking him about some other stuff, some business stuff, and this and that, and he had some ups and downs in that. But ultimately, ended up making really, really good money just on the education and people being fans of the brand, which was Westside Barbell, which is, you know, when I first moved here, you couldn't buy a Westside t-shirt. If you saw, it was like some biker gang shit. If you <laughs> saw a dude wearing it, it's because he trained there. And if you was wearing it and you weren't supposed to, 
they're going to address you like on some gang culture shit for real. And so like when it, whenever the one I wore this morning, which I should have wore for this podcast, but when I squatted 600 and he threw me that sweatshirt, which I was pretty big at that time because it's, it's, it's pretty big on me. It didn't even, they didn't even have the dog on the front then. If the dog was only on the back and it said West side on the sleeves and you couldn't buy that. So I remember when I got that, I was like, fuck, you know what I mean? Like I can fucking wear this motherfucker (laughs) now. It's like, it's probably like getting your fucking like, like your patch or something. Right. Um, and so, but when it started to become more popular and you know, it was a real business, I was up there and man, I'm seeing the amount of t-shirts they're selling all over the world. And Louie used to say, I think I'm more popular overseas than I am here. And then I think that changed with CrossFit. I think it changed with with athletics. I mm-hmm. think the amount of educational material that he has kicked out is at such a high level. It inspired me to continue doing content upon content upon content um, along the process because I saw like he was still impacting people in his seventies from the content. That's wild, which is wild, dude. I think about myself being four, about to be forty four to think that I could be teaching this for thirty more years. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. And for him to compete all the way into his sixties. It's pretty wild. So I don't know. There's just so many inspiring takeaways, but mm-hmm. I just think the mentality and the learning and, and to be able, it's it's uncommon, but to experience two people um, I look up to the most and then to actually work with them or be around them in person is pretty, I would say pretty uncommon, which makes nice. me obviously uncommon, for but sure. that, but that's definitely contributed to why I'm me Fuck between yeah. him and Arnold for sure. Pretty wild. Anything else you guys yeah. got? It's like perfect. I, <laughs> yeah. I think it was a great way to end it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was good. Big time. All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Small Arms Danny. At Trey Speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. Yeah. We're out. Psych, you thought we were done. Bonus content because we forgot to talk about it. The monolift that's here behind us, I bought from Westside. Now, this monolift which if you're not familiar with the monolift, is a competition squat rack. Yep. And Louie had multiple lifters, I believe Chuck Vogelpohl being one of them, that couldn't get his feet wide enough, which I can uh, identify with now as I'm squatting more weights. So he said, Corey, skinny Corey, do you want to buy this monolift? Because I knew I was, he knew I was looking for one for old school. And it was like 1600 bucks or something. I go, uh, yeah, I'll take it. Because I knew it had mad history to it. And as I started looking on videos, I'm like, uh, this was on like the platform at the Arnold. There's like <laughs> huge nine. There was like 900 pound squats with Chuck acting crazy. Like this thing got wild. I can't even believe he would sell it. Yeah. Instead of just welding it out, so he buys a brand new one. It's yellow. It's actually the one I squatted 700 on. He let me borrow it for the meet. Um. So I had both of them. So I had a warm up monolift and that at old school. And so anyway, he got the yellow one for probably I don't know a couple months. And I get a call. Corey, you want to sell that one back to me? And I was like, uh, like I didn't want to sell it back. So I was like, I was like, Louie, I actually like, dude, I fucking love it. I just don't know. Like, he's like, all right. Okay. So I basically told him no. <laughs> <laughs> so he was going to take it, chop it, weld it yeah. wider. And, but, uh, I'm glad I didn't, even though I felt shitty saying it. That's fucking great. Because now, you know, this was, yeah, definitely one of, the premier monoliths that they had during the heyday at West Side. It'll forever now live at old school. Um, and, you know, it's a pretty epic piece of powerlifting Fuck history. Yeah, dude, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Probably the best $1,600 I've ever spent. Uh, I'm sure we'll have more stories, but I think for now we're done. Bonus content. That was pretty cool. Telling some stories. All right. We're out. Later. <laughs>